Hello, friends. My name is Kathy Little. I'm a student of Yeshivat Shuvu. I currently reside in Northern California, San Francisco area. My home fellowship is called the Congregation of Zion in Stockton, California. I'm very honored today to have the opportunity to present to you a brief teaching from Megillah Ruth. There's a famous wedding rhyme dating back to Victorian era England from the late, late 1800s that goes something like this. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, a sixpence in your shoe. To this day, it is a deeply instilled and cherished wedding tradition of the Western world for a bride to collect these objects from family and friends, from her community, and incorporate them on her wedding day in hopes of having a happy, successful marriage. These five objects are said to bring good luck to the new couple and protect their, their future children, legacy. The theme this Shavuot is about the bride's gown of many colors as she prepares for her wedding day. But a bride is not completely dressed until she adorns herself with accessories. I will pull on this theme from our special reading today from Megillah Ruth, to tease out these five elements of the wedding rhyme, and we will see these in our scripture reading. Something old represents Debakuk, reconnecting to the Jewish root following the ancient path. Something new represents Simlotaich Alaich, the Sabbath dress. Something borrowed represents Kone, which means partnership. Something blue represents Yeled, a son, the, Mas the Mashiach, Ben David, and the sixpence represents Toldot, the generation that completes the tikkun or repair, and as a result merits the complete redemption and restoration. So let's begin. Something old, reconnecting to our roots. Reading from Ruth chapter one, verse 14 through 16, it says, but Ruth cleaved to her mother-in-law, Naomi. And Ruth said, do not entreat me to leave you, to return from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Back in the Victorian era, an old object gifted to the bride was meant to ward off evil, the evil eye of past suitors who wished her well. It also acted as a talisman to guard her unborn children. Something old symbolizes something given by the bride's family that represents continuity of her roots, something that she brings with her into the new marriage. This often includes a piece of jewelry, a clothing, or a, or a piece of clothing previously worn by the bride's mother, grandmother, or aunt. So the Hebrew word, word devakas or devakut is a Jewish concept referring to attachment or closeness to Hashem. Its transliterated meaning is rendered as to cleave, to cling, or to stick like glue. In particular, it is associated with learning and performing the 613 mitzvot that make our heart and souls davka, cleave, or bind together with Hashem. When a person performs a mitzvot with true intentions to do God's desire and not their own will, they they draw down spiritual power from heaven, which in turn powers their neshama, their spiritual soul, and strengthens it to carry out the mitzvot. This is the power of transformation. Whereas the text in verse 15 says that Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and returned to her own people and to worshiping pagan gods, Ruth stuck like glue. To Naomi, the meaning of our highlighted word davka, she refused to depart from her people and from her God. Now, hopefully, you've downloaded the Night of the Bride Siddur and are following along today. You can read the full commentary on these verses on pages 109 to 111. But summarizing it for you, when Naomi heard this oath come from Ruth, she immediately began to lay out before her the laws of conversion in an effort to test her. Ruth's response, your people shall be my people, meant that Ruth nullified her own desires and fully renounced idolatry. Your God shall be my God refers to Ruth accepting the yoke of the commandments. Rabbi Shapira, in his introduction on page 97, says that within the story of Ruth are three interwoven stories, the story of Messiah, 
the story of Israel and the story of the nations. One cannot separate the Messiah of Israel from the people of Israel. They are one and the same. Their paths and their storyline go from exile to return to complete redemption. The character of Ruth represents all three entities. She's a Moabitess, a Moabitess outsider who becomes a Jew. She's also a picture of the scattered remnant returning to the house of Israel, consisting of both Jew and non-Jewish Gentiles who prepare themselves for the great wedding through faith and righteous acts and whose reward is to wear the wedding gown. For the purposes of my presentation today, Ruth represents the non-Jewish scattered remnant aspect of the bride and Naomi represents the Jewish root, the bride's mother. In reality, both are returning to Israel. So what is the gift Naomi gave to Ruth? Will both of them actually share in the gift of Teshuvah, return? The prophets Hoshea, Joel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah all issue a call to the house of Israel, the bride, to make Teshuvah, and return to their God by putting aside idolatry and swearing an oath of fidelity, just as Ruth has done here. Yeshua in Matthew 23, 37 echoes that cry. He longs to gather us to himself as a hen gathers his chicks, her chicks. Are you willing? So teshuva leading to davka is the first item that the bride must collect and adorn herself with to be completely dressed and ready for her wedding day. So next, something new. Something new represents the Sabbath dress. Our scripture reads in Ruth 3, verse 3, Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your Sabbath clothes, or your clothes, and go down to the threshing floor. Do not make for yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. That word, put your garment upon you, simlotach alike is the representing the Sabbath dress. Something new is a symbol of the bride's new life ahead of her, a new beginning. It can commonly include a gift from the groom or the groom's family, but it can also include everything from a new piece of clothing, such as the wedding gown itself, or an accessory item, such as earrings, a necklace, or a bracelet. So quoting again from our commentary, written by Dylan White on page 121, According to Rashi, in conjunction with Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, 526 rather, you shall bathe refers to a cleansing from the contamination of idolatry and spiritual defilement. Anoint yourself represents the mitzvot and righteousness, which is referenced in the Brit Hadashah as the aroma of Messiah, 2 Corinthians 2, 15, and the righteous acts of the saints from our theme verse, Revelation 19, 8. Further, the Vilna Gaon states that the putting on of garments are actually the donning of Sabbath clothes in anticipation of the coming of Messiah, which Yeshua refers to as the wedding clothes necessary for entering into the kingdom. It is intriguing to note that the phrase Vayered Hagorin and go down to the threshing floor could be understood as a veiled reference to the future temple and resting place of the Shekinah, the Divine Presence, whose merit will go down with us. Naomi's instruction to Ruth creates a blueprint for preparing the Bride of Messiah for the great eschatological wedding, as well as the method by which we can return the Divine Presence to Zion. By following these instructions, the Bride of Messiah can effectively rid herself of all sources of tuma, spiritual impurity, achieve Kedusha, holiness, in the merit of Messiah, and succeed in putting on the wedding clothes necessary to present herself to her bride without spot or blemish, and enter into the day that is all Shabbat. In that day, heaven will truly declare the bride has made herself ready, Revelation 19.7, as every nation, tribe, tongue, witness the restoration of the Shekinah to the, front, to the threshing floor. So something new represents the Sabbath dress, the wedding gown itself as the bride makes her way to the threshing floor, symbolizing the temple in Jerusalem. The Sabbath dress represents each and every one of us clothed in the garment of light, 
the Shekinah, as we gather under the hoopah with Messiah. This is the groom's gift to his bride. Next, something borrowed, which means partnership. Reading from Ruth chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I harm my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redemption and exchange. To confirm anything, one would remove his shoe and give it, the Natan, a gift, to his fellow. And this was the attestation in Israel. And the near kinsman said to, Bo to Boaz, Kenilach, buy it for yourself. And he removed his shoe. Something borrowed points to the idea that borrowing an item from another happily married woman, particularly an undergarment of a woman who already has children, would confuse the evil eye into thinking the bride was already fertile and the curse would be thwarted. In effect, transferring the woman's happiness and fertility onto the new bride. The garter is typically worn as a way to symbolize and honor this custom. The phrase kenilach means to acquire, purchase, or exchange. The exchange of the shoe between the two parties completes the act of acquisition as one acquires legal, legal title and authority. The garter worn on the woman's thigh is removed by the hand of her groom after the ceremony and he kneels as he kneels before her. This gesture is a sign of mutual submission. The bride rests under her husband's domain and holds the full authority of his household. The Eshet Hail, the woman of valor, is a special Shabbat song honoring the Jewish woman in whose merit will come the Messiah and the final redemption of the Jewish people, Talmud Sota 11. It is an ode to his great-great-great-great-grandmother Ruth, written by King Solomon in the final chapter of Proverbs, and sung every week at the Friday night Shabbat table. Boaz and Ruth were willing to do whatever it took to fulfill the Torah of Hashem, especially with regards to redemption. They worked in unity to bring about the lineage of the final Redeemer, the Messiah. Together, they point to the natural and wild olive branches, the tree of Israel, from which formed the one new man referred to in Ephesians 2.15, as well as throughout the new covenant. We find in the Amidah, the first prayer of vote, fathers, these words, El Elyon Gomel Hasidim Tovim Bekoni Hakol, God Most High, who bestows good kindness and purchases all. It goes on to say, who remembers the kindness of the patriarchs and brings a redeemer to their children's children for the sake of his name and love. Here we see that the borrowed gift is the opportunity to partner with Hashem in the act of redemption. We partner by connecting heaven and earth through our acts of good kindnesses with submission and respect toward one another as just as our ultimate redeemer modeled for us. Next, something blue. This represents Mashiach ben David. Reading from our verse, Ruth 4, 13. So Boaz took Ruth by Ikak, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Something blue is a color that symbolizes fertility, fidelity, and love's purity. It was believed that both the blue and the old objects offered protection to the bride against the evil eye, a curse passed through a malicious glare that could make the bride infertile. When we think of babies, we often associate the color blue with boys. Each of the 12 tribes were associated with distinct stones, banners, and symbols. Judah's color is sky blue, his stone carbuncle. His associated symbol, symbol is the lion. The color of his flag resembled that of the heavens, embroidered on it was a lion. The lion would later become associated with the Davidic dynasty of kings and the seat of their throne in Jerusalem, a city that goes by a number of names, including Ariel, God's lion. Boaz descended from Peretz, who came from Judah and Tamar. This is the lineage of King David. 
And last, sixpence. Restoration. Now these are the generations told of parrots. Ruth 4.18. Back in Victorian times, the father of the bride would place a sixpence, a British coin, into his daughter's left shoe as a symbol of future prosperity and wealth. There are only two incidents, according to our commentary on pages 134 and 135, there are only two instances where the word generations, told dot, is spelled with both letters Bob, such as here in Ruth 4.18. The first instance is found in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 2.4. In every other instance in between the words is spelled defectively with only one Bob. The Messiah who descends from Ruth will ultimately make a tikkun, restore the missing Bob, and bring complete restoration to the sin for the sin of Adam. According to the Hebrew scriptures, the sages, the new covenant, and the, are the path to eternal life is through the Messiah. Those who embrace personal redemption given by Messiah Yeshua will respond to this free gift with, with good works and store up for themselves treasures in heaven. Rav Shaul explains that although we are not saved by our good works, we are saved to do good works, Ephesians 2.10. And just to recap the five bullet points now as we conclude, something old represents connecting to our roots, something new, the Sabbath clothes, something borrowed, partnership, and something blue, Mashiach. And lastly, sixpence, restoration, our future. Well, friends, I hope this presentation has been interesting and enlightening. I encourage you to download the Night of the Bride resource and thoroughly study the commentaries of our esteemed Talmudim, who put many hours of personal time and finances into creating this unique resource and making it available in over 13 languages. The resource is free to download, but it's not free to produce. Please consider financially supporting the work of Ahavat Ami as we co-labor together in bringing forward the Messianic Kingdom. The time is now. The harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the workers are few. I hope to see you down at the threshing floor.